quietly. Very quietly and without any major controversy, Sir Solomon Hochoy ruled Trinidad and Tobago as Governor General, representing the Crown in Britain. He was the first Caribbean man to hold such a title in this country, as all previous Governor Generals were British nationals. But the distinction bestowed on him did not create an individual with pretentious airs and an aloof attitude. Instead, Sir Solomon, and by extension his wife Thelma, was the most unassuming, natural leader who occupied office, with a sense of duty and a modicum of dignity. Parliamentary Personalities A man of dignity, Sir Solomon Hochoy, 1905 to 1983. Sir Solomon was a man born for his time. He was much larger, larger than life, both in stature, and, and both in character. He had what we in the military would call command presence. Uh, if he walked in a room, you would know he was there. And he had this personal dignity about himself, which helped him greatly to carry out what was a very difficult role. Solomon Hochoy was born in Jamaica on April 20th, 1905, of Hakka Chinese descendants. The Hochoys migrated further south to Trinidad when Solomon was two years old. They established residence in the north coast village of Blanchichers, which the extended family still calls home today. As a child, Solomon attended the Nelson Street RC School and the Arima Boys RC. It was at the latter that he won an exhibition scholarship to study at St. Mary's College in Port of Spain, also known as the College of Immaculate Conception. His secondary school education spanned the years 1917 to 1922. In 1927, Solomon embarked on a long and distinguished career in the government civil service that would have him being elevated to the highest position in public life in Trinidad and Tobago. As a civil servant, he began working as a junior tally clerk in the coastal steamers department of the harbor master's office. From here, he expanded his knowledge and career growth through several departments of the civil service, including the labor department of the industrial advisors department. In 1944, he was appointed as a deputy industrial advisor and by 1946 was named the labor commissioner. As his career developed, Solomon met and married Thelma Edna Huggins on February 3, 1935. Born on September 17, 1910 in St. Madeline, Thelma's main interest as an adult was in social welfare. This devotion to social work would become evident as the couple's political life developed. Continuing his rise in the ranks in the civil service, Solomon Hochoy was also granted a colonial title in 1952 when he received an Office of the British Empire Award, or OBE, as it's commonly known. By 1954, he was appointed Deputy Colonial Secretary and the following year began acting in the senior position of Colonial Secretary. In 1956, he was confirmed in this pivotal position which realized him being a direct representative of the Crown based in London. In achieving this promotion, Solomon Hochoy became the first local or non-colonial person to be appointed to such a post in the British West Indies. And he was very well chosen because he gave the impression of being a totally arbitrary and fair person and was able to convey to the entire nation that he was for them and he represented them because he was very, very basically Trinidadian. Even though he was not a Trinidadian and was born in Jamaica. He came from very humble beginnings up in Blanchichers, and but he grew up in the old traditions of things, the politeness, integrity, dignity, and so that helped him greatly to carry out the role he had to carry. By 1959, his status was elevated further when he was made a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George. He was also bestowed with several other honors, inclusive of the Knight of the Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order. In 1960, Solomon Hochoy was formally knighted by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, gaining the title Sir Solomon. He was also made Governor of Trinidad and Tobago on July 13, 1960, the first time a non-white, non-British person held the highest office in the land. It was difficult because he was the first Trinidad governor and governor general. And before that, there were many, many British and Spanish governors. And so there was a long tradition to maintain, but he had to maintain all of these traditions in an evolving young independent nation. 
And so that probably was his greatest challenge to face, was to mix the new with all the traditions and customs of the past. On August 31st, 1962, when Trinidad and Tobago became an independent state, Sir Solomon's title automatically changed to Governor General. This transition meant that he was the last serving British governor of the country and its first Governor General, a position he held until 1972, when he retired and was succeeded by Sir Ellis Clark. On his retirement, Sir Solomon returned to Blanchichers, where he spent the remainder of his life. Paying tribute in Parliament on September 14, 1972, the day before Sir Solomon retired officially, Prime Minister Dr. Eric Williams described him as an outstanding example of the most conspicuous successes of the policy of West Indianization of our public service. Noting Sir Solomon's capacity for unerring judgment, Dr. Williams commended him for serving the country long, faithfully, and well in a difficult period. Giving further insight into the challenges of leadership which Sir Solomon would have faced as head of state, Dr. Williams said, Mr. Speaker, what perhaps of all present you and I could best understand to one who whatever the barbs, whatever the intemperance, whatever the scurrilous attacks to which he had been subjected from time to time, Sir Solomon has been able to maintain throughout it all the decorum and deportment of, a difficult word to use in these days, a gentleman. A somewhat rare bird in this period of discarding and the erosion of all established values. Dr. Williams also noted Sir Solomon's natural ability to mix with people at all levels, whether it was at a village council meeting in Blanche Shares or a garden party at the Governor General's residence. The time he took over, a lot of his staff at Governor General's house at the time had been there for several governors. And so the traditions were well entrenched within Governor General's house. The problem was that he had to go out of Governor General's house and meet the people and be with the people. And I think the thing that helped him most with that is he had a tremendous sense of humor. And he could see humor in any circumstance. And he was able to pass off even the most embarrassing things because of this sense of humor. Although he had this very strong integrity and personal discipline. For his unswerving dedication to public service to Trinidad and Tobago, Sir Solomon had achieved many honors, including being the first to be conferred with the Order of the Trinity, the Trinity Cross, in 1969. However, the landmark which most distinguishes his outstanding legacy is the North-South Roadway, the Solomon Hochoy Highway. Originally constructed in the 1970s as a two-lane highway connecting Chaguanas with San Fernando, it is now a four-lane dual carriageway structure extending into overpasses, under construction in the north, and expected to link the southern borough of Point Fortin in the south. On November 15, 1983, Sir Solomon passed away at the age of 78. Having lived for most of his political life at the official Governor General's residence in St. Anne's, now known as the President's House, he was buried in the Botanical Gardens in the official grounds of the residence. Today, he survived by his adopted daughter, Joyce Chin Assing, and many relatives. The memory that stands out is not a good memory for me. It's a memory where I embarrassed myself and him, but the way he handled it says a lot about his character. It had to do with a rotary dinner, and all of Trinidad's dignitaries was at this dinner, the ambassadors, captains of industry. It was a very formal affair. And as usual, he was asked to make a speech after dinner. And this was held in Queen's Park Hotel, which is on Victoria Avenue. And there was a galvanized roofing sticking out to stop the rain from going in. This, in those days, things were open. We weren't enclosed in air condition. So there was this galvanized roofing. And he got up with his back to Victoria Avenue and was making a speech. And the moment the speech started, I heard this crash on the galvanized. And it sounded like somebody was in Victoria Avenue pelting a stone at him, and it hit the galvanized. And so I said, well, ADCs at the time were bodyguards and close protection people as well. So I said I would have to go into action that night. And then I heard the noise again, and I opened my jacket. I was armed at the time. And I said, one more, just one more, and I'm going to have to take charge and protect the government. And I heard this crash again on the galvanized. So I sprung up, took my weapon out, pushed him to the floor, and as I looked over the balcony, 
Another ripe mango from the tree fell and hit the galvanized and rolled down. It was an acutely embarrassing moment for me as well as him. And going home in the car, I knew I was going to be fired and the glass came down and he said, boy, you made an ass of yourself tonight. I said, yes, your excellency. And he burst out laughing and he said, but you did the right thing. And that sums him up. He could see the humor in every situation, but knew what was correct. And so I was saved. For many in Trinidad and Tobago, Sir Solomon would be remembered for the quiet dignity with which he held office, his unobtrusive style, his methods of representing the crown without seeming oppressive, his delivery of the throne speech at ceremonial openings of the Legislative Council and later Parliament, his presence at official functions dressed in white uniform, or even a customary vision of him sitting atop a horse when he reviewed the troops at military functions all characterized a man of nobility. In many of these public appearances, there was the complimentary support of his wife, Lady Thelma. Like her husband, Lady Thelma showed genuine devotion to Trinidad and Tobago. Her passion for social welfare work saw her establishing the Lady Ho Choi Home for Retarded Children and the Trinidad and Tobago Home for the Retarded. She was also instrumental in raising funds for many charitable projects, including the Blanchichers Presbytery, True to her character of grace and humility, Lady Thelma declined to accept the Trinity Cross she was offered, stating that she did not deserve it. One award she did accept was from His Holiness, the Pope. Today's ceremonial opening of parliamentary terms present throne speeches delivered by the President of the Republic and contains the vision of the present government. There was a time when these speeches actually originated from the throne in colonial England and was revealed by Trinidad and Tobago's only local colonial governor, an unassuming man called Sir Solomon Hochoy. <laughs>